hard-hitting reporting, like this investigation of dirty airlines. Would you believe we found tray tables with food stains, bathroom floors with sticky stuff I don't even want to know the origin of? I'll show you some whammy. A newscast that asks the tough questions, here live with the mayor of Miami-Dade County. What's the capital of Ohio? Akron. Oh, oh, man, it would be Columbus. Oh, okay. Thanks very much. I'm O.J. Simpson. Like it or not, I love whammy. A newscast where the anchorman cheerfully admits... I hate the local news. Ben Mankiewicz is a man of the times. That's what Whammy calls its evening news. Local news is often just one thing you don't want to know after one thing you don't want to know. And here's something different. Uh, I think it's what we're trying to do is incredibly noble. What they're trying to do is offer an alternative to the usual local newscast. You just can't watch. It's unwatchable. How do you mean? They all look cookie cutter alike. I mean, it's the same blazer and the same... You know, it's, they, they all are the same person. Media mogul Barry Diller is the brains and the bucks behind Whammy. Late last year, he told us about City Vision, his plan to put the local back in local TV. The stations have become more affiliated with networks. Less and less has anybody ever dealt with what's actually going on in the community. So we thought, why not do a television station that really is, as much as you could, the juice of the local community. So he took the Miami outlet of his home shopping network and filled it with locally themed shows, sports, and news. Diller had put his money where his, well, where someone's mouth is. Headline, South still reeling after crippling ice storm. At Whammy, along with the usual talking heads, there are talking lips reading news headlines. And just so no body feels left out... All the breasts, legs, and thighs you can handle. Tens, a nightly review of the best bods on the beach, with viewers voting for their faves. You'd get crucified if you ran that someplace else. Terry Jackson reviews TV for both the Miami Herald and for Whammy. Let's face it, a part of Miami Beach's ambiance is to sit on the beach and look at the beautiful people. So in that regard, it does accurately reflect an activity here in South Florida. It does, and serves it with a kind of twist that appeals to Whammy's target audience, the sort of young, cool crowd that fills trendy South Beach. In fact, that's where Whammy has its studio, in a rebuilt auto showroom facing a pedestrian mall. When we first visited late last year, a tropical storm was lashing the beach, the top story at every Miami station, except Whammy. Because, big deal, it's coming. It's going to be rain. It's going to be wind. Duh, we're in South Florida. It's hurricane season. MJ Witt is executive producer of The Times. The real um, cornerstone of our coverage is, I think we're just more curious. For instance, in May, when NATO bombers mistakenly hit the Chinese embassy in Belgrade. Every newscast told that story, but Whammy was curious enough to send a reporter to buy a map of Belgrade from the Auto Club. Apparently, the CIA could have avoided the boo-boo by just using plain old tourist maps. What struck me is it's sort of like broadcasting with sort of a wise-ass attitude. I like what you've said, because what you said is broadcasting with an attitude. What is that attitude? Is it, uh, you know, I mean, is it valley girl attitude? Is it uh, intelligent? Is it snarky? Is it whatever? We're after personality. We think personality's mostly gone. Not here. Like its hometown, Whammy, at its best, is topical and tropical, but rarely typical. When the station had an opening for a weather forecaster, it held on-air auditions. Can you uh, find Virginia for me on that map behind you? Um... Other way. Ben Mankiewicz says, while silly, Somewhere. at least it was honest. And I said when I introduced him, it's a ratings period. Um... And we want to increase our ratings. <laughs> <laughs> so rather than do what the other stations do and talk to you about teenage hookers in Cuba, we're just gonna we're just gonna bring sex right to you. We're just gonna bring in gorgeous women to do the weather. And yeah, it's shameless, but this is what we're doing. Oh my goodness. Okay. Do you think this is where television is heading? Absolutely not. That's the reason we're there. But Diller and his money can't guarantee that an audience is there. In fact, research has shown that viewers often prefer the newscast with the most murder and mayhem, or as they say in the business, if it bleeds, it leads. So how can Whammy win? The idea of having an independent and alternative station is not to, you know, win the market. It's to be an alternative, it's to be an independent.
to, there's going to be a group of people out there who, who is, the Times is exactly the show that they want to see. And there don't have to be millions of them for it to be successful. But success in TV is almost always judged by the bottom line. Self-made men like Barry Diller tend to basically wake up in the morning, I think, and decide what they're going to do differently today. It could be he wakes up one morning and says, you know, it was a nice try, but I'm just not losing any more money over this. And he could pull the plug. How will it ultimately be judged? By the ratings? By what? It needs to get... 5% of the audience. Now that's not chopped liver. If it gets 5% of the audience, it's be a big success. A year later, Whammy has gotten that 5% frequently, but only when it's on its game. Heat on Whammy. Diller paid a reported 10 million bucks to show the Miami Heat and the Florida Marlins. And when they play, Whammy gets that coveted 5%, twice the usual audience for the Times. So that's kind of like, a, what would you call that, an, an insurance policy that people no, will watch? Well, it? yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's an insurance policy, but I, I think that you know, we've got to put on compelling stuff, and, and, and local sports is absolutely something we would like to do. Today, sports is one of the few things here that still is local. When it began, Whammy boasted nine hours a day of original shows. Today, it has two and a half. The rest goes to reruns of old sitcoms and cheesy cop shows, the very things Diller's experiment was designed to eliminate. If we can't declare the experiment dead, we can at least declare it on life support. Most of the, most of the shows that Whammy kicked off with are no longer on the air. This big experiment of 12 hours of local programming a day is clearly a bust. Or is it? Diller reportedly will go ahead with his plan to extend City Vision to four other cities. I don't think we'll do exactly what we did in Miami in the next city it would be, for many, many reasons. Miami is a kind of a prototype, an experiment in place. And a lesson, apparently. Sources tell us the news stations will focus less on local news, more on local sports, if Diller can buy the rights. At Whammy this fall, there will be no new original programming, just more reruns and old movies. But Whammy hasn't lost its best asset, its own voice. Oh, Whammy. Are there two better TV anchors in the world than Judd Rose and Willow Bay at CNN? I don't think so. In a completely unrelated story, CNN, here, CNN is here doing a story about our show, and we're so happy to have them. You gotta love it. The only newscast where, if it pleads, it leads. Oh, and by the way, apropos of nothing, of course, is there a sharper, more insightful anchorman in TV news than Ben Mankiewicz? Don't think so. We'll be right back.